Greetings fellow humans, Bad Mark here with another transmission of Mech Tech Keyboards and today we're taking a look at a sibling of a keyboard that we've already taken a look at. That keyboard that we've already taken a look at is the Halo 75. I have to admit, I, I used to say I'm not that big of an RGB fan, but turns out I am. The design the new Fee Studios has done with the Halo series is honestly impressive to me. I think they did a really good job. Um, they started out with low profile boards in kind of the Keychron sort of model. But if you want something new and exciting, well, and you're looking for a 65%, and here is the Halo 65. Now, I have yet to open her up and take a look at it. But based on everything that I know from the 75, now granted, I haven't gotten to the uh, mod video. I have been using it, and I like it stock. I mean, I haven't even touched the stabilizers. I just use it the way it is, and it's fine. And I mean, it's got heft to it, but it's not too heavy. It feels great stock. It types great stock. It sounds pretty good stock. Um... I believe it's a top mount, but I haven't opened it yet. I did see a video, and it does look like it's a top mount. I believe it was from Scott at Keyboard, um, where he opened it up, and it, it does look like it is a top mount keyboard. But I do intend um, to open her up and do some mods and see how the construction of it is and kind of, you know, see what kind of magic sauce they put into here because I can honestly say that the Halo keyboards, in my opinion, from all the keyboards I have seen, so many of them are more similar than not. And personally, in my opinion, I think what Halo did with this, not only in looks, aesthetics, with the colors that they chose, with the lighting effect, that diffuser, that not only diffuses this is the same lights on the outside border, also does the inner border, which I'm sorry, it's pretty cool. Now, Hey, uh, Nufi did send out this keyboard uh, as well as the 75 uh, for me uh, to do my honest review on. So that, you know, all of my opinions are my own. Uh, they did not ask or expect anything of me. Uh, Madison over at Nufi has been great. She's like almost always on the Discord, very active, helping out people. Um, now, the, the Nufi console, the software when the, when the um, 75 came out, it was still in beta, but it is now out, and I gotta say, it's pretty good. It is not QMK via, but it is one of the closer closed source software. I mean, they they did, from what I can gather. I mean, they're either developing it internally or they're working very closely with a contracting firm um, outside of of their their team, but they're working very closely. And I mean, I've got to say, I'm gonna do a video. Um, um, I hope that I'm going to be getting the uh, Halo 96, which is the 96% or the 1800 version of this one, which is going to be the next one they put out in the Halo series. For the Halo, I'm also going to do a video for the Nufi console because uh, I'll probably do it once I get the 96 so that I can do a complete look at, you know, how it works with the different ones. But I'm, I really, you can tell that this software is different. Uh, do I wish they would have gone with QMK via? Yes, but I mean I understand, and at least they're 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 working on it, and they're continually working on it. They they've been putting out, I want to say at least three, two or three releases a week while they're fixing bugs and handling everything. But right now I think it's pretty stable. Um, just one thing to note: if you do install it, um, it creates different folders for all the versions because they're still in a development. Uh, you know, so it's still RC or release candidate. Um, you just have to find the newest folder. So the link that it creates on the desktop, they're supposed to fix this by next version. So by the time this video is out, it could already be fixed. But if, in case it's not, um, and you click on the uh, the shortcut and it gives you an error message, go look at the fo file folders where it's located under C program files x86 forward slash newfie, I believe. And there'll be separate different folders. Just select the one for you know the latest version should be able to look at it by date 
and open that one up, open up the executable inside of that folder, and you'll get console to open up. So, like I said, from what I understand, it's going to be released in the next... I, it may have already been fixed, and I just haven't taken a look at it in a few days, so I don't know. Anyway, so today we're taking a look at the Halo 65. It is the 65%. I believe it's a 67 key, 68 key, 65%. It is... Um, from what I can gather, it's top mount. It has an ABS base, and it has a aluminum frame. It is a three-mode wireless. It does have a different 2.4 type of technology that it's um, it's called low delay. I don't know. I haven't read too much into it. But I just know that it's it's a new way to do 2.4 in case you're within a in case your immediate area has a lot of 2.4 interference. This is supposed to prevent any delay. Um, it is Bluetooth 5, and that's what I prefer. Uh, I just rather not pollute the 2.4 gigahertz um, spectrum anymore. And where I live, I mean, it's literally pages and pages of 2.4 gigahertz, um, 2.4 gigahertz network. So just adding an, uh, another device in there, it's just not. But Bluetooth has worked great for me on this, uh, for what I've used it for. Um, I did set up the 2.4, and it did. It was immediately like that, and I didn't notice any difference, honestly. But I didn't use it that long, and I don't game. So, uh, now, they do include a waifu. And perhaps I'm just too old. I started out with Massinger Z and Captain Harlock, um, Gundam. Uh, Macross, uh, Akira, Vampire Hunter D. I loved anime growing up. But I've kind of, I mean, don't get me wrong, I like Attack on Titan and a couple of the newer ones, but for the most part, I've just kind of, I've just grown up. Though my kids are huge into anime. But I got to say, the whole, you know, Japanese anime combo with gaming and with everything else, I mean, it's interesting, but I don't want to sound too old. I don't get it <laughs> but that's just me because i don't know i don't know if she is an existing character or did they create her just for this anyway let's go ahead on here we see that they do have an iso layout i have not requested one of those because even though i grew up using iso um because my first uh, computer is when i lived in costa rica as a child so um i was commodore 64 i thought those I don't even remember. No, no, I don't think that was an ISO. I don't think that had the L shape. But um, the IBM PC Junior that I got a little later on, that was an ISO as well. Anyway, so they have the ISO layout, and it looks like they have the J Japanese layout as well, which I also have not seen. And I may try to get a hold of one of the ISOs and take a look at it so that it can cover, you know, more. I mean, the rest of the world is ISO. ANSI is only American National Standard. Now, I do know there's people outside of the United States that just use it because there's more keycap sets available. But I'm of the opinion that every keycap set should include both ISO and ANSI. It just should because you, you shouldn't be, or manufacturers shouldn't be limiting the choices for people that are in different markets. I just, I mean, and to add a couple of keys usually isn't that much more. Anyway, that was my... That was Mark's rant corner for the day. So let's go ahead and open this up. The packaging is very nice on these keyboards. I do like the sleeve, and I like how well they're packed. They are being shipped internationally, so it's important that you know they're well padded, and these are well padded. Now, I am looking at... Oh, great. I got the white. I uh, currently have the black, so now I get to see what the white looks like. It is the Ionic white. And it comes with night breeze switches. And if I'm not mistaken, those are the um, linears. Because uh, on the other one, I got the glacier rows, and I believe those were tactiles. They also included uh, baby raccoons, baby can kangaroos. Oh, I can't remember. I get those babies mixed up. All right, so anyway, let's open her up and see what we've got inside. And here we are. This is the Halo 65. I have got a I've got a place in my heart for these. Like I said, they're a little bit different than all the other keyboards. I mean, I've reviewed. I think I'm right near 200. I, I actually I have to look because I 
I unfortunately I created like several spreadsheets for videos and reviews and everything like that. There's multiple videos, so because I think I'm pushing 400 videos on YouTube right now. I don't know. I I I don't keep up with stats as much as I should. Uh, a lot of other stuff that I that I have to do, but I want to make sure that I. I put my effort into doing this. I do enjoy it, and I hope... I mean, I get plenty of messages on almost a daily basis of people thanking me uh, for my honest reviews, and that's how I intend to remain, um, acting as a consumer and being honest about what I review. If I find an issue, I mean, <laughs> I'm going to state it, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make it clear. I'm not going to try to hide it because I don't want people to you know, spend their hard-earned money when they expect one thing and then they get something else. So... Obviously, I try to be as objective as possible, but I am a human being, so there's going to be some subjectiveness in there, but I try to leave as much of that out as possible. Anyway, we've got, this is one thing that I truly, truly like. I mean, I know it's just packaging, but I mean, that's nicely packaged. There's no loose USB-C cable. You've got your extra keys, um, not only for the Mac and Windows, but as well as changing the highlights. And you can even go and change the spacebar back to white, if you'd like, um, and the escape back to white. As you can see, I like that the escape actually shows the, um, the secondary function layers on it, as they do for several of the keys. Not all the keys, but the multimedia and, of course, that tilde. Um, if you're a programmer, you work in Linux, you can't really do much without that tilde. It comes in very handy. I mean, you can, but you have to type a lot more. <laughs> but yeah, we've got the different switches that it includes. There's the night glacier, uh, the night breeze, the rose glacier. That's the baby kangaroo. That's the baby raccoon. And I believe these are Gatoron Pros. Uh, red, green, or er, red, brown, and blue. Red, green, and blue. Where, why would I say that? <laughs> Uh, we've got our user manual that does come, appears in several different languages, and is, uh, oh no, this is actually an FAQ, that's right, these are to answer the questions you might have, like how do I do this, how do I do that, but online and on their Discord, they do have um, great support, so any questions I've had have been answered fairly quickly, um, and I haven't had really that many, it's just more of it was about the console software, but... Like I said, I'll be doing a video on that, and it is working out, and it is nice. So we've got the um, the Waifu stickers and a Newfi logo sticker, as well as a quick start guide. So it has plenty of documentation for whatever you may need. And here we are with the star of today's video, the Newfi Studios Halo 65, the 65%. Uh, three mode wireless that includes a new or improved 2.4 gigahertz um, receiver technology as well as Bluetooth 5.0 and of course USB-C. I'm going to go ahead and give it a put it on wireless for right now just so that we can uh, see it boot up. Oh, no lights. Oh there we go. So one of the things that I I want to point out the differences and why I feel this is different. Now, I want to speak more about the top mount, but I haven't gotten into it yet, so I don't want to speak too much until I actually have it open and in my hands. So we'll get back to that in a video that I'll be doing. Um, I plan to come back to both this one and, and its big brothers and do some mods. I don't think I will, they'll will require too many mods, but I'm going to see what kind of sounds I can caress out of them. So one of the things about these let me take the night breeze out that's a nice snappy linear um a little light maybe 40 grams with a bottom out of 45 50. I don't, i'll look at the specs but um it's actually a nice looking switch, and despite it not being lubed, it does have some minor spring pink. So I may actually, uh, we'll see what we do with the sound test if, uh, if I'll actually go through it now. I have uh, been doing what's called donut dipping. So let me just do this with one switch. I've been doing this on my last couple of videos. All right, so yeah, we can see that it appears to be a long stem. And yeah, there is no lubrication, but I personally 
I've stopped lubing switches. They're like, what? I do this if there's spring ping. Doesn't take that much. Just want to make sure that you get all the way around and that it's not in the middle. You don't want any grease getting in the the little hole where the stem goes into because uh, that'll create a squishy kind of noise and it's not pleasant. So I take the spring, donut dip it, put it back in, and then put the switch back together. So the spring ping is completely gone. Now this one is smooth and does not require any breaking, in my opinion. But I do know that some switches, from personal experience, do come scratchy. And that scratchiness can be quite annoying. But that scratchiness is due to just tolerances, you know, the plastic expanding or whatever. Um, and they're, they're quite slight. Most switches, not all, but most switches after a couple of weeks of being used will that scratchiness will go away. Some require a little bit more than others. And in that case, that's why I use um, a switch breaking machine. I don't do it with all switches, but if there's any amount of scratchiness and it bugs me, I can throw them in there. I've got enough to do, I think, 144 at a time. Or no, more than that. Yeah, that's right, I built a couple more. I don't know, probably 200. Anyway, or close to that. But, I have found that donut dipping the spring and then using the switch usually gets rid of any annoyances. Lubing the entire switch, I just don't think. Lubing the entire switch, in my opinion, is just not necessary. But, so anyway, we did the page down here. It's a little deeper. Uh, another key. It's this one's almost clacky, and this one's. I think you guys can hear the difference. Anyway, we have this nice light. Um, it stops blinking once you have a connection, and um, I believe it also does the battery indicator. But I haven't used it enough to in wireless mode to actually run down the battery. Now it does have a 4,000 milliamp hour battery. But let's go ahead and take it out of wired mode because this has an off switch. It has a wireless. This keyboard has an off switch. It has a wireless switch, a mode and a wired mode. So I found it best always if you're going to do wired and go ahead and put it into the wire mode and plug it in. So now, yeah, that orange means it's charging and then I think it becomes solid green once it's fully charged. So anyway, we've got some really the, the keycaps. Alright, the first time um, when I did the Halo 75 I was like alright, what profile is this? And I kept say, seeing KOP on, on the listing but I was kind of just scrolling through and I didn't catch that KOP is the profile. I don't know what the KO stands for, I believe P stands for profile. But um, these keys, if you look at it, they do have a bit of a sculpt to them. Though, and they are tall. Not quite as tall as SA, but very close. It's a very interesting profile that they use. Um, so you can see, there's the escape key. It's almost like a... <laughs> I don't know why this kind of reminds me of a little fuzz. Um, but they are double shot, and the body with these keycaps. Yeah, these are PBT. So the P actually could be profile. And they were 1.3, 1.4 millimeters thick. Yeah. Oh, okay. Hold on. I need to get a better caliper. Yeah, they're 1.4 millimeters. That's about right. So, so we have a decently thick cap, and that 
is riding on top of some nice linears. Now they do have other choices for switches. Uh, the, the choices that are in the box are the choices that they have. Um, I have not had a chance to try the baby can't grooves yet. I've tried the raccoon, baby raccoons, the rose glaciers, and now I've got the um, night breeze in here. So I I like linears, but I am a tactile guy. Tactile is, is my jam. So anyway, looking at the construction of the keyboard, there's another thing that's hiding with the keycaps. So if you listen to the space bar, notice how nice and muted and deep it sounds. There's no hollowness or clack. Why? Another great design choice by Nufi. I don't know if you guys can tell, but there is basically a piece that is attached to the middle stud of the space bar and it has these uh i wouldn't say they're silicone they're almost like a resin they're hard but what they do is they act as reverberation control they reverberate they take most of the reverberation from the key and that's how you get that that effect now we can also see that we are quite well padded there's a lot of dampening in this kit um we can look if we go ahead and take out a key and a switch so we have an ipxe foam sheet that's sitting above the pcb we have what looks like a poron pcb plate dampener um, and then we have dampening down below that is quite solid it's probably a silicone so once we take it apart i'll be able to to get a lot more information from it now this is a north facing keyboard or north facing led keyboard do i think that's a problem personally no um, i find that there's a lot of people entering the hobby that end up hearing you know from whatever group they might be in but oh make sure it's south facing make sure it's south facing make sure it's south facing so that's all they hear they go get their first keyboard at south facing and they get their shine through keycaps and they're like yeah and they're like wait a minute why aren't my keys shining through well it's not in the right direction now yes there are some older switches and some keycaps that you will have interference with cherry and north facing but most of the newer switches, the ones that have come out in the last year and are new now, have new moldings. The majority of the manufacturers have either already completely moved over or are in the process of finishing moving over to the new molding. And basically the molding gives the, the switch a different profile so that it no longer interferes with even the thick cherry keycaps. So it's something that I try to mention as much as possible in case this is the first video somebody is watching. If it's important for you for the shine through, like you have a set in mind that has shine through, you're going to want to get north facing LEDs. If you have a south facing LED keyboard and you would like some shine through, you can still look for um, front or side shine through keycaps and those will basically allow the south facing light to come through it. They're going to be front facing, which means they're going to be on the front or the side front of, of the keycap. But they can look really nice. Ido Bow has a few of them that they're actually um, decently thick. I want to say they're like 1.2 millimeters thick, um, double shot, shine through, and they're very clean. They've got a couple of gradient sets. One that I have on my Q1 or Q3. Oh, I get them all mixed up all the time. So yeah, the design language for the um, Halo series is truly... I mean, it's inspirational. I, I'm more of a logic guy, as I was a program, uh, more of a software engineer. So the front end was not my place, but I can appreciate good, solid design. This has that halo that goes all throughout. Now, here you can see you have the you have the metal or the aluminum frame, which is honestly, I mean. I haven't seen if that's if this is CNC, but it is very clean and it has a indent of the logo for Newfie Studios. 
right up at the top. But it's very, I love that. Because, I mean, I understand companies want to brand their stuff. All right. That is the way to do it. Because this doesn't interfere, doesn't stand out. It doesn't ruin the effect, uh, the aesthetic of the keyboard. It just fits. I mean, obviously, if somebody picks it up, they're going to see it. But it's not going to stand out. It's not going to be the first thing you see and then see the keyboard as a lot of companies love to put a big logo right here. Thankfully, for most of them, they can be removed very easily by using some non-acetone nail polish remover and a little bit of uh, cotton. Do a little spot first to make sure that it will come off, and if it does, wipe it, no problem. Magic erasers also work too, but they are like sandpaper, so they will take away a little bit of the surface unless you're extremely careful and running only along the letters. That's for another video. Anyway, for this one, today we're going to do a stock sound test. I mean, except for the page down key, which I spring dipped, donut dipped. Um, I'm just going to leave it the way it is. I'm going to come back to it. I'll probably do um, the spring dip for all of them. And I'm also going to try their shine through keycaps. Now, they also did send me the uh, wrist rest and I gotta say it's nice I'm not usually a fan of resin wrist rest but I found that when I'm not at my workstation which has a keyboard drawer I'm getting more and more fond of resin stands and not the soft ones the soft ones eventually wear out um, they dimple they and they're not as sturdy in my opinion I always thought oh soft is better I believe these are better and I love how it just perfectly lines up with the case I mean it it's too heavy for it to be magnetic so I can understand um, but the only thing that I wish that Newfie offered honestly um, I don't think they do but who knows would be a carrying case um, you know like as an option perhaps that would take the wrist rest and the keyboard and carry it nicely I believe honestly it to me it's just kind of odd that I've gotten wired keyboards, um, NK, uh, KBD, uh, Back and Echo, all these wired keyboards that come in carrying cases, which I mean I I get and don't get me wrong I I, I like the carrying case but I think that they should definitely especially if you're spending above a certain amount they should be considering either including or having an option for a carry case if it's a wireless keyboard. Why? Because you're most like more likely to be traveling with it than not, right? So, well, that's just my opinion. But anyway, these are the shine through keycaps specifically for the Halo set. So we will take a look at them on the keyboard next time, but just let's open it up right now and just take a look at what we've got. Oh, looks like I shook some up down there. So it looks like we're dealing with the same profile. Oh, and these actually seem to be a, a tad bit thicker. Let's see. Yeah, they're about 1.5 where the other ones were roughly 1.3. So shine through keycaps at 1.5? Wow. I mean, that's a... Uh, I don't think I've seen that before. I don't think I've seen shine through keycaps thicker than like 1.2. They're usually under one millimeter so I've got to say these are very nice and let me just they definitely seem to have a little bit more of a clack to them than a thought but I just wanted to show you guys and like I said the next one I'll do the switches lubed and with those keycaps and then you know, I'm going to get into it, open it up, see what kind of mods we can do, maybe take away the IPXC and replace it with some PE, see if we can add some pop to it. But, like I said, today we're just going to stick to the um, to the standard sound test. And we're going to get to hear what this keyboard sounds like out of the box. Um now this keyboard retails for $119.95 um, from Newfie. 
I do believe they uh, have some of them now on Amazon, but they are listed a little bit higher because they have to uh, cover shipping and obviously the Amazon fee. So I think with shipping from them and buying it from Amazon, it's roughly about the same price. So um, just a thought for those who are considering buying it. But they do ship extremely quick. They ship DHL. Um, I don't think it took a week. So I want to say it was a four or five business days. Uh, for this one to arrive so so they do good fast shipping now again if you're interested in this keyboard I'd say take a look at it because yes it does have a similar layout as others that it has a blocker there but the layout the feel the construction the stock sound I mean this keyboard checks off many of the boxes and Personally, I'm not, you know, got to be gasket mount or got to be tray mount. No, because in the end, it's how the keyboard feels. Because, I mean, if you're like me, you've bought some of the, the TH, uh, well, TH80, NJ80, the IK75, uh, the Next Time 75. All these that claim to be gasket, and technically they are, because they, you know, the plate has gaskets and they either have gaskets on the plates or gasket inside the case and yeah if you have the top of the case off you can push them down and you can get a little bit of flex but as soon as you shut it and close the top case in that's it there's no room now there's mods you can do to allow for more room for that bounce to get there but then you have to worry about if that keyboard has a daughter board or not meaning if the USB-C is on the uh, PCB and you get too much flex you're actually you know at a danger of breaking off the USB-C port, especially if it has, you know, a very snug port, as most of them do. Um, this one, I do believe, is on a daughter board. So that means the PCB can move up and down all it wants. The daughter board is going to stay still, which is fine, because we don't want more of the USB plug codes to be moving up and down. Uh, it's a good way to quickly ruin a cable. So I am... I'm excited to bring you the sound test of this keyboard. I know others have reviewed it. I just got it. I'm reviewing it. I'm going to make it my daily driver for a while and have some fun with it. And I will, like I said, I've got several videos planned for the Halo series, um, especially once I get Big Brother, Halo 96. I have, um, I'm a TKL guy with a numpad, but if you give me a 96%, a nice 1800, I'm good. I'm good to go. Um... It doesn't have a knob, which I do like. I really, I've, I've delved into this hobby so much. I'm here. I'm stuck. I'm in the rabbit hole. I'm, I'm moving in. I've brought my bed, my blankets, uh, all my phones and my computer. So this is where I'm setting up camp. And I'm going to continue to do this because I enjoy it. And I enjoy the positivity in this hobby. I enjoy the camaraderie. So many people are just so willing to help. You know step up and be like hey why don't you try this why don't you try that especially in our subreddit budget keeps i've got to say i've met some amazing people and i love helping out you know the uh i don't want to call them noobs because it's almost derogatory it's people that just haven't learned you know about certain things on the keyboard and that's fine um there's no reason to knock somebody because they ask a question when they're honestly trying to you know learn and I've seen in other online forums where newcomers are treated almost like pariahs. That's just not right. But it happens, unfortunately, with almost every hobby. You will see a group of, oh, we've been doing this for a while. We know way more than you if you don't know how to answer this question or what this means or that means. And you have no bit. Like, why? Why are you going to gatekeep somebody having fun and enjoying themselves? As long as they're not, you know... Get putting themselves out of food, house, or home um, when buying keyboards, then it's a hobby. And, I mean, people are into a lot of things, whether it be watches, whether it be shoes. To me, I never, you know, not even shoes. I mean, I've got a my pair of Docs. It's from, like, 1996. And I st <laughs> they, st they're still, they still work. And I buy a pair of Adidas or Pumas about once every three or four years. Um, so... I understand they're a tool, but this is a tool that I use every day. So, 
and I've been using keyboards since the 80s or computer keyboards since the 80s so I I, I don't know. I just love many things about this hobby. So I hope that my videos are spreading awareness. And as always, if you guys have any questions, like I said, I'll be coming back to this one. I'll be coming to the Halo 96 as soon as it gets here. But if you guys got any questions, any any comments, any any things, any ideas that you guys have for mods or for me to look at when I go open it or, tr you know, try with a different switch or different key gap sets because I have some ideas that I'm going to do and have fun with these. But I love your guys' feedback. I I can't thank everyone enough for, I mean, I'm at 1,450, I think, subscribers uh, today. Um, and I know other channels have grown quicker, but, I mean, um, it, it's about quality not quantity and that's the way that i look at it so i appreciate each and every single one of you that watches my videos it truly it warms my soul and it really i don't want to get emotional here but it it, it really provides something for me that it, it i just enjoy i just enjoy i'm still learning i don't know everything there is to know about keyboards it's funny because some people think that i just know everything you know like Hey, so I have X and X and Y keyboard and you know X keyboard Y switches, and I want to do this, 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 and that. Um, would the spacing inside be enough for me to do this or that? And I'm like, oh, I haven't taken a look at that keyboard yet. Well, but what do you think? I'm like, oh, I don't know. I don't have measurements. I can't do it. So there's sometimes I can't answer questions, but if I can. I have, I have, I mean, I don't know how many times somebody's asked a question about a keyboard that I do have. Like, hey, what's the chin height on this keyboard? When I first started making videos, I didn't do the technical section, but now I've gotten a lot of positive response about my technical section because what do I do? I cover things that a lot of keyboard reviewers don't. It's just the basics. How much does it weigh? How much does it cost? What size is the battery? What's the chin? What's the typing angle? I watch a lot of videos where they review the keyboard and the sound test seems to be the penultimate. But, like I said, despite you know me trying to be as objective as possible, I am subjective and I do obviously throw in my opinion in there. But I think it's important to put as many facts. And obviously every keyboard has specs. And not every keyboard lists those specs. So I hope that I'm providing the community with something valuable some information you know they could use especially when some keep some folks don't like high chin um keyboards some people prefer them some people don't like the keycaps to be too tall some people prefer them so i i it's not my place to decide what other people like or don't like my job is to share as much information and be as honest as possible as i can about the keyboard that i'm taking a look at Let's get technical. Today we are taking a look at Nufi Studios Halo 65. It is a 67 key, 65% three mode keyboard. It is a pre-built with an aluminum frame and a bottom ABS case. It comes pre-built with your choice of switches from seven different switches and keycaps that are a profile called KOP, which is Nufi's own profile. And they are PBT double shot. It has a unique halo diffuser that spreads the RGB not only at the outside perimeter of the keyboard but also on the inside. It comes with a 4000 milliamp hour battery and stock weighs 974 grams. The chin of this keyboard sits at 20 and a half millimeters off the surface and the back at 30.5 millimeters giving you a default typing angle of 7 degrees. If you raise the middle feet, or the first set of feet, you're going to raise the back up to 37 millimeters and change your typing angle to 11 degrees. Using the last set of fold-out feet, you will raise your back height to 44 and a half millimeters, providing you with a 15 degree typing angle. Now one thing I really do like about the Halo series, not only are the accent colors, I think, well done. Um, they highlight stuff, but they're not gaudy. They're not in the way. They're just their accents. But this is one that I have not seen any other keyboard do. I have only seen 2.4 gigahertz dongles in black and in white. But 
if I ever come across this, like say if it were to have fallen out, though it's really well placed in there. And the fact that it has these edges right there is easy to catch with your nail and pull it out. But if for some reason this were to happen to fall and I came across it, I'm going to immediately know that this goes to a halo because it matches the color of the accent. So as with the Halo 75, I've got to say that so far, playing with this, I, I'm quite happy. Um, I kind of figured I would be, but I still went into it with an open mind. You know, because there could have been something done differently. But I love how they maintain the language. Uh, now, even... I wanted to check something. Huh. Yeah, the width is actually the same. So, technically, the wrist rest works with either one. I don't... Do they have a black one? I don't know. Um, so, it, it does. It, it works nicely. It's basically the same height. You have a tiny amount of... Bit of a lip here. Uh, but I think that's basically so that your thumb can feel out where the difference is. Um, but it creates a perfect typing angle, whether you like it low or you like it high. So, I mean, this keyboard, I, I continue to bring it back to my main workstation because I quite enjoy it. But now, it's Halo 65 time, and soon it will be Halo 96. Yeah, I know. I'm silly. Grown man getting excited about keyboards. Hey, makes me happy. What can I say? So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and leave you guys with the stock sound test of the Halo 65. And it, again, if you guys got any questions about this, let me know below. Uh, now, I, I will put in the description, but they gave me a discount code, MechTech. Uh, you can get 10% off this keyboard if you do order using that. Sometimes they do 20% offs, um, but I think that's only for sales. Uh, and it you know, can't be combined, but uh, you can purchase this, different keycaps, different switches, whatever you want, and you will get a 10% discount using my time. So if you guys are interested. Otherwise, I'm going to go ahead and leave you guys with the stock sound test of the Nufi Studios Halo 65 with Night Breeze Linear Switches. So until the next transmission, keep calm and keyboard on.